According to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Culver Street, Paddington. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Lyon. In connection with the murder, the police were anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity wearing a dark overcoat, light scarf, and a soft felt hat. Motorists are warned against icebound roads. The heavy snow is expected to continue, and throughout the country there will be a certain freezing, particularly at points on the north and northeast coast of Scotland. Too. What do you bet we're not snowed up tomorrow? Dear, I do hope not. Only the pipes don't freeze. Yes, we'll have to keep the central heating well stoked up. Not too good. I wish they'd send the coke along. We've not got any too much. I do also want everything to go well at first. First impressions are so important, you know. Got cold feet, have you? Are you sorry now that we didn't sell the place when your aunt left it to you instead of running this as a guest house? No, I'm not. And talking of a guest house, just look at that. Pretty good. What? It's a disaster. Don't you see? You left out the S, Monkwell, instead of Monkswell. Why, so I did. <laughs> How often did I come to do that? Well, it, it doesn't really matter, does it? Monkwell is a, just as good a name. You are in disgrace. Go and stoke up the central heating. Across that icy yard? Oh, shall I bank it up for the night now? Oh, no, you don't do that until 11 o'clock at night. How appalling. Have you got all the rooms worked out? Yes. Mrs. Boyle, front four poster room. Major Metcalf, blue room. Casewell, East Room, Mr. Wren, Oak Room. I wonder what all these people will be like. Oughtn't we to have got some rent in advance? I don't think so. We rather mugs at this game. They bring luggage. They don't pay, we hang on to their luggage. It's quite simple. <laughs> Still can't help thinking we ought to have taken a correspondence course in hotel keeping. We're sure to get had in some way. Well, you know, their luggage might just be bricks wrapped up in newspaper, and where should we be then? They all wrote from very good addresses. Oh. That's what servants with forged references do. Some of these people may be criminals hiding from the police. I don't care what they are, so long as they pay us seven guineas every week. You're such a wonderful woman of business, Molly. <laughs> And according to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Culver Street, Paddington. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Lyon. 
In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity wearing a dark overcoat, light scarf, and a soft felt hat. Motorists are warned against icebound roads. The heavy snow is expected to continue, and throughout the country there will be a certain freezing, particularly at points on the north and northeast coast of Scotland.
Christopher Wren is going to halfway home. Of course, everybody just laughs about it and makes jokes about St. Paul's. But who knows? One day I may yet have the last laugh. Chris Wren's prefab mess may yet go down in history. I'm going to like it here. I find your wife most sympathetic. <laughs> Indeed. And really very beautiful. Don't be upset. There. Isn't that just like an Englishwoman? Compliments always embarrass them. European women just take compliments as a matter of course. But English women have all the feminine spirit crushed out of them by their husbands. <laughs> <laughs> There's something very boorish about English husbands. Do come and see your <laughs> <laughs> Six feet of snow by morning. I haven't seen anything like it since I was on leave in 1940. Uh, I'll take these up. Blue room and rose room, did you say? No, no, I I put Chris Red in the rose room. He liked the whole poster so much. So it's Major Metcalf in the blue room and Mrs. Boyle in the oak room. Major! Uh, sir! Taxi to return, the roads are not yet blocked. 
We've had so many applications for rooms that we should be able to fill your place quite easily. In any case, we're raising our terms next month. I am certainly not going to leave before I've tried what the place is like. You needn't think you can turn me out now. Perhaps you'll take me up to my bedroom, Mrs. Rustle. Certainly, Mrs. Boyle. Darling, you were wonderful. <laughs> of Culver Street at the time. Uh, medium height, wearing a darkish overcoat, lightish scarf, and soft felt hat. Police messages to this effect have been broadcast throughout the day. <laughs> Useful description. Could fit pretty well anyone, couldn't it? When it says that the police are anxious to interview someone, is that a polite way of hinting that he's the murderer? Whoa. Could be. Who was the woman who was murdered? Uh, Mrs. Lyon, Mrs. Marine Lyon. She young or old? Doesn't say. Doesn't seem to have been robbery. I told you, a maniac. Uh, Miss Casewell, Molly, my wife. How do you do? Uh, it's an awful night. Would you like to come up to your room? The water's hot. You like a bath? You're right, I would. He pulled out, he stuck in his thumb, and pulled out a plum, and said, What a good boy am I? <laughs> I should 
think so. No, very original, perhaps. Oh, but do let me help. <laughs> I adore cooking. Why not an omelet? You've got eggs, haven't you? Why, yes. We, we do the lock of fowls. They don't lay as well as they should, but we have to put down a lot of eggs. <clears throat> and if you had a cheap, any type of wine, you could make, put that in with the uh, minced beef and cereals, did you say? Uh, give it a, a continental flavor. Show me where the kitchen is, and I dare say I shall have an inspiration. Come on. This is 
Monksville Manor Guest House, you said. Good. Monksville Manor Guest House. Perfect. has to have a beginning, you know. Excellent breakfast this morning. Good coffee. Scrambled eggs, homemade marmalade, all nicely served too. Little woman does it all herself. Amateurs, there should be a proper staff. Excellent lunch too. Corn beef. But very well disguised corn beef. <laughs> Red wine in it. Mrs. Ralston promised to make a pie for us tonight. Radiators are not really hot. I shall speak about it. Comfortable beds, too. At least mine was. Hope yours was, too. It was quite adequate. I don't see why the best bedroom should have been given to that very peculiar young man. He got here ahead of us. First come, first serve. From the advertisement, I got quite a different impression of what this place would be like. A comfortable writing room and a much larger place altogether, with a bridge and other amenities. A regular old tabby's delight. I beg your pardon. <clears throat> uh, yes, I quite see what you mean. <laughs> no, indeed. I shan't stay here long. No. No, I don't suppose you will. <clears throat> really, this is a very peculiar young man. Unbalanced mentally, I should wonder. I think he's escaped from a lunatic asylum. I shouldn't be at all surprised. <coughs> Giles? Yes? Could you shovel the snow away again from the back door? Coming. I'll give you a hand. Oh. Good exercise. Must have exercise. Yeah. 
Oh, you mean her. She pinched the best chair. I've got it now. <laughs> you drove her out. I'm glad. I'm very glad. I don't like her a bit. Hey, let's think of things we can do to annoy her, shall we? <laughs> oh, I do wish you'd go away from here. In this, mother who? But when the snow melts. When the snow melts, lots of things may have happened. Yes. Yes, that's true. <coughs> snow is rather lovely, isn't it? So peaceful and pure. It makes one forget things. It doesn't make me forget. How fierce you sound. I was thinking of something. What sort of thinking? Ice on a bedroom jug. Chill blames, raw and bleeding. One thin, ragged blanket. A child shivering with cold fear. My dear, that sounds too, too grim. What is it, a novel? You didn't know I was a writer, did you? Are you? Sorry to disappoint you. Actually, I'm not. Jeep could get through today. Anyway, what's it all about? That's what I asked, but he wouldn't say. Just said I was to impress upon my husband to listen very carefully to what Sergeant Trotter, I think it was, had to say, and to follow his instructions implicitly. Isn't it extraordinary? What on earth do you think we've done? <gasps> do you think it's those nylons from Gibraltar? <laughs> I did remember to get the wireless license, didn't I? Why, yes, it's in the kitchen dresser. I had a rather near shave with the car the other day, but it was entirely the other fellow's fault. We must have done something. Probably something to do with running this place. I expect we've ignored some tin pot regulation of some ministry or other. You practically can't avoid it nowadays. Charles, I wish we'd never start to this place. We're going to be snowed up for days and everyone is cross and we shall go through all our reserve of tins. Tira. Everything's going all right at the moment. I've filled up all the coal scuttles and brought in the wood, and stoked the egg and done the hens, and I'll go and do the boiler next. You know, Molly, it must be something pretty serious for them to send a sergeant trucking out in all of this. It must be something really urgent. Oh, there you are, Mr. Ralston. Do you know the central heating in the library is practically stone cold? Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Boyle, we're a bit short of coke, you see. I am paying seven guineas a week here. Seven guineas, and I do not want to freeze. I'll go and stoke it up. Mrs. Ralston, if you don't mind my saying so, that is a very extraordinary young man you have staying here. His manners and his ties. And does he ever brush his hair? He's an extremely brilliant young architect. I beg your pardon. Christopher Red is an architect. My dear young 
young woman I have naturally heard of Sir Christopher Wren. Of course he was an architect. He built St. Paul's. You young people seem to think that no one is educated but yourselves. I met this friend. His parents called him Christopher because they hoped he'd be an architect someday. And he is. Or nearly one. So it turned out all right. Hmm. Sounds a fishy story to me. I should make some inquiries about him if I were you. What do you know of him? Just as much as I know about you, Mrs. Boyle, which is that you're both paying me seven guineas a week. That's all I really need to know, isn't it? And all that concerns me. I don't really care whether I like my guests or whether I don't. You are young and inexperienced and should welcome advice from someone more knowledgeable than yourself. And what about this foreigner? What about him? You weren't expecting him, were you? To turn away a qualified traveller is against the law, Mrs. Boyle. You should know that. Why do you say that? Were not you a magistrate sitting on the bench, Mrs. Boyle? All I say is that this Padovicini, or whatever he calls himself, seems to me... To Beware, be dear lady. You speak of the devil, and there he is. <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. I came on tiptoe, like this. <laughs> Nobody ever hears me if I don't want them to. I find that very amusing. Indeed. Now, there was this young I lady... I must get on with my letters. See if it's a little bit warmer in the drawing room. Sergeant Trotter. Good afternoon. 
You can't be a sergeant, you're too young. I'm not quite as young as I look, madam, but terribly hardy. <laughs> sensation at the time. It was Stanning was sentenced to terms of imprisonment. Stanning died in prison. Mrs. Stanning served her sentence and was duly released. Yesterday, as I say, she was found murdered at 24 Colville Street. Who did it? I'm coming to that, madam. At the scene of the crime, a notebook was found. In the notebook were two addresses. One was 24 Colville Street, the other, Monksville Manor. What? That's right. That's why Superintendent Pugman, on receiving this information from Scotland Yard, thought it imperative that he send someone on the scene. He'd have come himself if, if it had been in any way possible, but under the circumstances, and, I, as, an, and as I can ski, he sent me along with full particulars, to get, to, with instructions to get full particulars of everyone on the, in, in the house, to report back to him by phone, and to take whatever measures I felt necessary to ensure the safety of the household. Safety? What danger does he think we're in? He's not suggesting someone's going to be killed here. I don't want to frighten any of the ladies, but frankly, yes, that's the idea. But the whole thing's crazy. It's because it's crazy that it's dangerous. Nonsense. I must say, it does seem a bit far-fetched. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Is there anything you haven't told us? Yes. Below the two addresses was written three blind mice, and on the dead woman's body a note that said, this is the first. Below that, a drawing of three little mice in a bar of music. The tune was that of the nursery rhyme, three blind mice. You know how it goes, three blind mice, three blind mice. See how they run, they all ran up to the farmer's wife and cut up their chest. It's horrible. There were three children and one died? Yes, the youngest, a boy of eleven. <coughs> what happened to the other two? The girl was adopted by someone we haven't been able to trace her present whereabouts. The boy would now be about 22, deserted from the army, and hasn't been heard of since. And according to the army psychiatrist, was definitely schizophrenic. A bit queer in the head, that is to say. And they think it was he that killed Mrs. Stanley? Yes. And that he's a homicidal maniac, and that he's going to turn a pair and try to kill someone? Why? That's what I've got to find out. 
as a superintendent sees it, there must be some connection. Now you state, sir, that you have never had anything to do with that business at Longer Charms. Uh, and the same goes for you, madam? Well, I, no, no, no. What about servants? We haven't got any servants, which reminds me, Sergeant Trotter, would you mind if I went to the kitchen? I'll be there if you need me. Well, that's quite all right. Now, if I, if I might have all your names, please. This is quite ridiculous. We are merely staying in a kind of hotel. We only arrived here yesterday. We have nothing to do with this place. Mm, but you'd plan to come here in advance, though. You'd book your rooms ahead. Well, yes. That of a genie. Not a car overturned in the snow tree. I see. What I'm getting at is that anyone who may have been following you around might know very well that you were coming here. Now, there's one thing I want to know, and I want to know it quick. Which one of you has anything to do with that business at Long Matrons? You're not being very sensible, you know. One of you's in danger. Deadly danger. Got to know which one it is. All right. I'll ask you one by one. You first, since you seem to have arrived here more or less by chance. Mr. Perry. Hello, Hello, Vicini. But my dear inspector, I know nothing, and nothing of what you are talking about. I am a stranger in this country. <coughs> I know nothing of these local affairs of bygone years. Mrs. Boyle, I don't see, really, I consider it an impertinence. Why on earth should I have anything to do with such, this distressing business? Miss? Caseborn, Leslie Caseborn. I never heard of Longwood Farms. I know nothing about it. You, sir? Metcalf, Major. Read about the case in the papers at the time. I was stationed in Enderburgh then. Had no personal knowledge, though. And you? Christopher Wren. I was a mere child at the time. I don't even remember hearing about it. And that's all you have to say. Any of you? Well, if you get murdered, you have yourselves to blame. Now, Mr. Olson, if I may have a look around the house. My dear, how melodramatic. He's very attractive. <laughs> oh, I do admire the police. So stern and hard-boiled. Quite a thrill, this whole business. Three blind mice. How did that tune go? Really, Mr. Wren? Don't you like it? <clears throat> but it's a signature too. A signature of the murderer. Just fancy what a chick you must be getting out of it. Melodramatic rubbish. I don't believe a word of it. Oh. Oh, but just wait, Mrs. Boyle. Just creep up behind you. And you feel my hands on your shoulders. Stop! <clears throat> That'll do, Christopher. It's a poor joke anyway. In fact, it isn't a joke at all. Oh, but it is. That's just what it is. A joke. A madman's joke. That's just what makes it so deliciously macabre. <laughs> oh, you can just see your faces. <laughs> Singularly ill-mannered and neurotic young man. Where's Giles? Taking our policeman on a conducted tour of the house. Your friend, the architect, has been behaving in a most abnormal manner. Young fellows seem nervy nowadays. Dare say he'll grow out of it. Nerves. I have no patience with people who say they have nerves. I haven't any nerves. <laughs> no. Perhaps that's just as well for you, Mrs. Boyle. What do you mean? I think you were actually one of the magistrates on the bench at the time. In fact, you were responsible for sending those children to Longridge Farm. Really, Major Metcalf, I can hardly be held responsible. We had reports from welfare workers. The farm people seemed quite nice and were most anxious to have the children. It seemed most satisfactory. Eggs and fresh milk and a healthy out-of-doors life. Kicks, blows, starvation, and a thoroughly vicious couple. 
But how was I to know? They were very civilly spoken. Yes, I was right. It was you. One tries to do a public duty and all one gets is abuse. <laughs> you must forgive me. I enjoy myself greatly. I find all of this most amusing. <laughs> Suspicious. I think I'll make my report to Superintendent Hodgman now. But you can't. The telephone's dead. What? Since when? Lady Metcalf tried it just after you arrived. It was all right earlier. Yes, I suppose since then the line started to snap. I wondered. It may have been cut. Cut? But who would cut it? Mr. Alston. Exactly how much do you know about these people who are staying in your guest house? We, we don't really know anything about them. Ah. Mrs. Boyle wrote from a Bournemouth hotel. Major Metcalf from an address in... Where? Leamington. Yes. Uh, Red wrote from Hampstead and the Casewell woman from a private hotel in Kensington. Panavicini, I would have told you, turned up in out of the blue last night. 
Still, I suppose they've all got ration books and that sort of thing. I should go into all that, of course, but there's not much reliance to be placed in that sort of evidence. But even if this, this crazy killer is trying to get here and kill us all, or, or one of us, he can't get here today because of the snow. Nobody can get here until it melts. Unless he's already here. Here already? Why not? All these people arrived here yesterday evening, some hours after the death of Mrs. Stanley. But all except for Mr. Padovicini they booked beforehand. Why not? These crimes are planned. Crimes? There's only been one crime in Pulver Street. Why are you so sure there'll be another one here? That it will happen here? No. I hope to prevent that. That it'll, that it'll be attempted? Yes. You see? It's this telephone wire that worries me. I, I must go up and put on the vegetables. It's been cut. Study the precise effect produced on the human mind. Imagine, for instance, you're home alone. It is late in the afternoon. The door opens softly behind you. Noise! 